Welcome to my channel, Miss Pedance Adventures. My name's Alex, and that's a big box. This is another video on my little mini series looking at water heaters for camper vans, particularly ones which use a diesel air heater to make hot water. And that is a Bubble Vans air hybrid heater. Be looking at the Bubble Vans hot water heater and its powerful heat exchanger, but also the Bubble Vans smart controller, which can automatically control valves, turn water on and off, tank level sensors, and can even take control of your Chinese diesel heater, automatically turning it on, giving it a decent working thermostat, and also turning the Chinese heater off if it becomes too hot, as well as controlling Autotherm and other brands as well. And I've got the original Wobble Vans kit in my van. Turns out I was order number 19 for the company. And it's served me well over the last two years. I've done two Arctic winters using it. Which has kept my water hot, mainly for use in my recirculating shower in the van. And I'd be very happy with it. In full disclosure, I'm probably biased. Because of that video I made about the original Wobble Vans kit, I ended up working for them for six months living on their driveway. Ed and Gabriella, who own Bubble Vans, are friends of mine. And whilst he did offer me monetarial reward to make this video, I did turn that down. I can't charge my friends. So we're gonna take a look at the heater, test it, see how well it works, and I give you my views and opinions. But overall for me, I'm happy with the original one that I've got in the van. Right, what's in the box? Very big box. So we've got instruction manual for the hybrid heater and the new Bubble Van smart controller, but we'll get onto the smart controller later on. Lots of van insulation. Right, we'll take it out piece by piece. So, box number one, <laughs> Sweeties sticker, and all the components for putting it together. We'll look at those later. We've got the main component of the Bubble Vans heater, which is the heat exchanger itself. We've got a automated duct, which we'll zoom in and have a look in the box later. Uh, and the main actual piece of kit. And two tank level sensors um, for my water tanks. Right, let's get rid of the box, have a closer look at the individual components. Right, in this box, temperature cable, that's cat five cable, a box. Is that a D1 Mini? A little, well, I, th I think it's a D1 Mini, I'm not entirely sure. Um, is it a little Arduino with a Wi-Fi module on it? Nice quality ducting jubilees. The bubble van ducts, which will do your 75 mil or 90 mil or 60 mil, depending on which model you go for. 220 mil for the radiators or for the heat exchanger. When I was working for Bubble Vans originally, these were 3D printed uh, in house and then demand got so big they are now produced from glass reinforced nylon, I think. I've actually got a few of those in the van used for other projects. A little Bubble Vans relay board. They've even got their own printed circuitry. That's cool. Oh, yep. There is a, uh, again, Bubble Vans' own printed circuitry with another one of the DWAS minis in. I don't know if there's a particular reason there's two of those or that, and that's clearly replaceable for some reason. Later, Ed did tell me that there are different versions of the software loaded onto the units, so I could swap them if I wanted to try a few different things testing. And to control panel only, ah, auto term slot, the brown and white wire. Brown and white wires and auto terms, if they are joined together, will start the heater and take it apart, they'll turn off. Ah, this is a, uh, the kit is a lot more advanced than my generation one kit. The Bubble Vans control unit, or smart controller, and then more of the, well, that's what that cable goes into, and that plugs into the other end of it. I'm gonna put the different D1 Mini in. I thought it goes into the master, which is this one. Cool. We've got temperature sensor, and another little, Data sort of, no, another little cable. Extension cable for the duct servo to the controller if needed. And we have a diverter, uh, which is controlled by a servo. Cool. Which is a feature I quite like. I like being able, with the hot water tanks which use air, diesel heated air is 100, can be 100 plus degrees, which means you could get the water a bit too hot if you're going through all the time. So the ability to divert it is a great option. Although I think this is for 90 mil and I've got I've got 90 mil for my testing. I'm gonna install it myself. I might need a slightly different duck. Right, well, that seems to be the box for all of the smart controller aspects. So we'll put those back in. We'll talk about them more thoroughly when we actually get to install, putting a, putting a test bench together. So all the connections. And this is the Bubble Vans heat exchanger. So this is going to be quite an effective heat exchanger without doing too much resistance for a diesel heater. Uh, we'll do some tests later on to find out what the actual power is and all nicely looks like laser onto the side, as well as all the gubbins to connect it together. And then the last box 
Haribo Obel Van sticker, silicon tube, some 3D printed components. We'll find out what they are later on. Looks like a drain valve. This time, not quite sure, maybe some sort of float valve. This has got wires coming off it, maybe for auto filling. Another one of those valves. No, another one of those float sensors. Clips for putting the pipe on. Connectors for the pipe, which look like what also has one way valves in it. The circulation pump, this is what will circulate the water through the heat exchanger. More valves, 40 amp relay. We'll find out what that's for later on. And some brass fittings. And the tank itself. There you go, hot water out, cold water inlet. Temperature sensor, hot water element, because this has got a hot water electric heater in. I'm not sure which model this one particularly is, but I'll have a look in a minute. This is the DC 12 volt model, but they also do an AC model and they also do a DC and AC electric heating element combined model. And there you go. Well, let's first up get the exchanger assembled. Screws and all the fittings. That's cool, they freely, you can tighten it and they freely rotate. And then just put in some of the 8mm diameter hose to link both the cores together. Right, I'm just going to reuse some of the old fittings and piping on my old bubble vans heater. Right, temperature sensor. Well, there's one side done. I will probably say I will do it slightly differently this time around. One heat exchanger set up. Hot water is going to get cycled through there, through that chamber, up through that one, through there, down through that one, and then out the other way. Although I would say I've just installed that wrong because the temperature sensor needs to go on the thicker one first. The extra bits are if you want to do optional drain valves at the bottom of the heat exchanger to help drain water out if you're going into cold conditions. Right, next bit involves the heater. Right, putting the barb fittings on the heater itself. Heater has to be in this orientation and it needs to have the cold at the bottom still. So no tape as there are O-rings in the backs of these. The silver thing in my hand is a pressure relief valve. Right, tank set up. Next. Pump assembly, I'm going to replicate this and then talk through it. Right, getting there, so Y junction, one way valve. Main pump for your water system goes in there. These black clips are fiddly. Right, that is the inlet isolator hose made. All right, final assembly, I'm going to do that. And skip forward a little bit and here is a basic test bench all set up. So one thing to note is this bit here is my equivalent van water system. I've got a water tank here as a reservoir so I can fill this up. This is a diaphragm pump. This is 45 psi which is too much for this kit but I'm not going to pressurize the system so it's not too much of a problem here. And let me just explain a little bit what's going on here. So we've got cold feed into the tank, hot feed out, fresh water system comes in, that's an isolator to turn it off and on. So one way valve there, so that's one way valve for pushing water into the system. When the water's into the system, you have this circulation pump. Circulation pump can only go in this direction. So water gets circulated, gets sucked in, pushed through there, pushed through the heat exchanger into the bottom of the tank, and then that water's displaced and pushed back into the back of the pump. So the hot water is circulating through the system. You would have a your tap on here. So when that tap is going to be closed, it's going to circulate there. When the tap is open, the your main pump, because you relieve the pressure, it's going to push the water through. That's pretty complicated just looking at it. So here's the bubble van's diagram sort of showing how it works. Duct in the off position, all the hot air bypasses the heat exchanger and goes into the van. Duct in the on position, air goes through the heat exchanger and back into the van or outside. A lot of heat energy is removed from the hot air though. Circulation pump draws water from the top of the tank through a one-way check valve through the heat exchanger where it gathers heat and then becomes warm heading back into the bottom of the tank. This cycle repeats until the water gets gradually hotter and hotter. As this is a pressurized system, when you open a tap, water comes pushed from the pump through the heat exchanger, doesn't need to be on and off, into the bottom of the tank 
that in turn forces out the warm wet water at the top of the tank out the tap at the end. As there's a one-way check valve in the circulation pump, it doesn't allow water to go backwards. So the mess of the test bench. So closer look, here is the Bobble Van Smart Controller. Two temperature sensors, these are fixed in, and this is, well, there you go, internal temperature sensor, and the other one is an external temperature sensor. The external one needs to be kept away from moisture though. That connects to the other box with this cable. So that can be mounted in an area which you're gonna access it. This can be mounted and hidden away. Inside this box, you have this laid out. Let's just switch a different camera angle. Right. right, well, let's have a look of what we've got. Auto term, so that is for the two wires on auto term. If you touch them together or keep them contacted, uh, the auto term starts. Element, so that's for the relay for the hot water electrical element inside the hot water tank. That's for the circulation pump. That is for your power coming in. That is the connection to the smart controller itself. In the bottom, we've got the temperature sensor, which we put into the ducting slash heat exchanger. Right, temperature sensor. We've got the temperature sensor, which is prefixed into the tank. Temperature sensor. We've got water level monitors, which we already had a look at, be that gray water or for an actual level. We've got the servo control, red, brown, orange, which is what this unit's labeled up as, and direction depending on which outlet you have the heater on removing that jumper will basically swap around which one's hot air and which one's water so relatively simple let's get that all wired up there's also this small relay box which can be used for heaters which require a 12 volt signal to turn on which i think might be s-bar or wabasto and potentially integrating it into the afterburner controller as well which is a controller which i use for the chinese diesel heater Right, well, this might end up being a bit obscured because my tank, I can't, I don't want to cut these wires off for the point of uh, what I'm doing today. So temperature sensor, temperature sensor from the hot water tank. Additionally, we've got the temperature sensor from the heat exchanger. Although depending where you mount with this, is, these wires would probably be plenty long enough. Servo itself, so brown, red, orange. Right, let's now put on the pump. There is everything plugged in. Looks a bit of a mess. Normally, if you're not using this as part of a test bench, you'd probably mount that on the wall, trim out the little corners in there, and do all the wiring nice and neat. But this is a test bench, so we've got everything exposed. So let's have a quick look at the controller. It's turned on. Open screen, you've got hot water temperature. So I've just put cold water in the hot tank, so that's only six degrees. 17.3 degrees is, is the van temperature sensor, which is this one. You'd want to mount this in an area which gets a good average temperature. And this unit, depending on how you're using it, can control a Chinese diesel heater or can control an auto term. It's also got a tank level sensor as well. So I've just got one rigged up here. If we slide it all the way down, wait a few seconds, low water, slide it back up. So it could get your tank water levels. Next page, it's got your external temperature sensor and it's got your battery voltage. As you can incorporate it into your heater, you've currently got internal temperature and is the air heating on or off. Next room, water heating is the water heater on or off and the water temperature. Air and water, turn that on, it will try and heat both the air and the water in the van at the same time and uses the diverter to do so. Setting up a routine. Routine if you wanted to do it for air and water. Set point, so heating the air in the van, what you would want the heater to turn on and off at. DC element, I haven't got that rigged up yet, but if you wanted the DC element, when it gets above 13.7 volts, the element turns on, counts down for 300 seconds, and when the 300 second count gets to zero, the element turns on. And then if it drops below 12.7 volts, it would then turn off again. Set the time for the unit, and as the bubble vans has a local access point, you can connect to a web app if you connect to the unit's Wi-Fi. Splash screen, and back to the beginning. Right, well, I'm going to use it in the sense of if I was using the auto term. I haven't set up the auto term correctly, so it's not going to know, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the auto term on. And we're going to turn that on on there, and we're going to see what happens. So we can see a little symbol showing the heating is currently on. So go need to prime the system. Got my diaphragm pump here, got that valve open. 18 litre water tank, all I need to do is Turn the pump on just so I fill everything with water, really, and then turn it off again. So I'm going to use my Milwaukee battery, M12 battery, and turn it on. So we should hear bubbles for a while till we force all the air out of it, and then it should start to fill up. When the bubbles stop, that will be it filled. 
There we go, system all filled with water. Right, heater is currently going, hot air is coming out here. So let's turn on hot water and see if the flap comes over. There we go, now hot water is going through the heat exchanger. Temperature's starting to pick up. Circulation pump is now circulating water. You can see the water temperature starting to come up. Well, to be honest, the testing didn't go to plan to begin with. Not so much an issue with the system, more my test bench. I specifically mentioned I kept my system unpressurized because my pump's too powerful. And that led to a few issues. One of them being the circulation pump was able to suck air back through the open tap effectively, which means it wasn't circulating the heat well enough. And eventually I figured that out was the issue and made some adjustments. And then the difference between when the circulation pump wasn't working to was working was drastic. So I was able to get all the test data I want. So the testing data itself to work out the heat output of the heat exchanger is using a formula to work out watts in power and that is mass of water so the liters of the tank or the liters involved your heating times by specific heat capacity of water which in this case is 4.186 times by the amount of degree increase because i'm monitoring every degree increase it would be one that's then divided by the time and that gives you the wattage of the of the heater needed to make water change that temperature in that amount of time. There can be some issues with the temperature test data when you're heating a small cylindrical heat tank. Normally you would have stratification and convection current. Stratification being layering of water. Top of the tank is usually hotter than the bottom one. And convection currents being hot water rises and those currents can artificially height change the temperature sensor's reading. And that depends where the temperature sensor is mounted. In this tank, it seems the temperature sensor is mounted about halfway up to low down, which is probably gonna give a slightly more accurate reading or a colder reading than the top of the tank but this tank might not have stratification as an issue as it is being actively mixed by them. So the water should be being completely mixed opposed to other tanks I've looked at in the past. It's more static with no active mixing, so only convection currents are mixing it. Not all my testing did go well. Because it was unpressurized, I chose not to use some of the retaining clips because there's to be no pressure in it. However, I did put a valve on the end of the output so I could simulate a closed tap. Unfortunately, two times I forgot to open a valve before I pressurized it to 40 PFI, which blew off the pump pipe into my face twice. Unfortunately, my cameras weren't running, but here's the aftermath. Well, that didn't go well. Right, test bench set up, diverter currently turned off water modes that hot air is coming out of here. I'm going to turn hot water mode on and we're going to see the valve close. And we should see, let's turn it on. Oh, at the minute I've got Wi-Fi control on, so we've overridden it. So Wi-Fi control is on. And if I turn it on this, we see the valve close. So, uh, auto term current running on max, this screen times out, so we're going to run the timer and look at the temperature increase over time. So results, run test a few times running on the AutoTerm 4D, which was running at max, and an average about 1.5 to 1.7 kilowatt. Here's the graph showing the data, and as you can see, that looks pretty crazy. Um, but that is using the maths to work out, particularly the heat exchange wattage. If you look at the time over temperature increase, you can see it's pretty linear temperature rise. Generally in the test I was doing, it goes from around 25 degrees to 60 degrees in about 20 minutes. One of the comments I got a lot on my previous video is what if it's the summertime, I don't want to run my diesel heater. There's two options for that. Some people ducked the air after the heat exchanger out of the vehicle. Realistically, I find the so much energy has been removed from the hot air through the heat exchanger that the air coming out of it is only really lukewarm. And considering how quickly it heats up the water, you don't need to run it for long. I haven't really found in my two and a bit years of using my original version, that it hasn't really heated the van up too much when I've been trying to heat water. Or vice versa, in the winter, 
when you're trying to heat water, it does it so quickly, you're not really gonna get cooled down the van as much. Since I looked at heat gain, I also looked at heat loss. One of the tests I finished about five or six in the afternoon. Well, it is quarter to 11 in the morning. I finished all of this testing yesterday about, I think five or six o'clock when this tank was up to 65 degrees. And it's currently 37.8 inside that tank. Over a 12 hour period, more than 12 hour period, it's really only lost around 20 degrees. So that is a really well insulated tank. I mean, those do feel cold. And it only the tank had only dropped just about 20 degrees overnight. But it is quite a insulated tank. And so I've just artificially turned on the hot water element by changing the voltage of the power supply to 13.7. And it's doing its 300 second countdown before it turns on. Right, well, the DC water heating element is now on. When that's on, it doesn't turn the circulation pump on, which means any test data I get won't be the right accurate because it won't be mixing because you have certification and convection currents, but that is a 200 watt DC element. So you would get around 200 watt out of it. Reason you might want to use a DC element is solar dump load or a dump load, which means if the engine finished charging your batteries or solar almost charged your batteries, opposed to having unyielded, energy from the engine or from solar it automatically turns on somewhere to put that energy you could also put the ac1 to be turned on when you're on electric hookup do remember that the element switches are not for running the element directly that is not powerful enough it's to send a signal and that's what the 40 amp relay is for 40 amp relay so you would have the relay running the higher load and just use the ports on here to be a signal for the relay to turn on and off one of the other important bits, um, which I think will be particularly popular for people, is how does this control your Chinese diesel heater and what can it do? Why does it make what is a dumb Chinese diesel heater intelligent with a smart controller, th working thermostat which regulates pump speed and can even turn off if the van gets too hot? How does it do it? Well, it effectively hijacks these remote controls, which is popular with many of the different Chinese heaters. At the minute, there are a couple other, like my Halkiri one has a different remote control. It doesn't work with controllers like this or some of the Max Peening Rods ones, but they are getting more and more of the controllers learning the signals so that in the future, this will work with more and more Chinese heaters. But at the moment, lots of the common ones which have the black controller and all this style of remote control, it can learn the commands. So I've already got an afterburner controller, which is a third party Chinese diesel heater controller. Excellent, been using it for a couple of years, gonna still use it. But if people didn't have that and they went for the bubble van system, this is how it would integrate. So we're going to unplug my afterburner and plug in my old controller. And the way it works is pretty simple. This ends up mimicking the commands which the controllers give out. So it should work with most units which use this little blue controller. However, they are learning the signals from other controllers. So long term, you'll be able to use more heaters, but at the minute, Heaters which use this style of remote control, which is probably the most common, do work. All the way you do it, turn your heater into Hertz mode, opposed to temperature. On the black controller, you hold down that top button there until it goes into pairing mode. So now, normally if you press the button on there, this is gonna see the signal because it's looking for a signal and it's gonna then link this controller to it. In, the, in this case, what we're gonna do is go into settings. We're gonna turn on to water heater. And if I press on, that's gonna then link this controller to it. If I don't time it out. So now if I press that, there we go, it's now linked. Transmitting water heater to on. It's gonna dial up the power. That's gonna turn it off actually. So now you could mount this hidden away so you don't have to see it. And this could be your interface for using your heater. So now this is gonna be using this temperature sensor here, which you can mount anywhere you want in your vehicle to tell the controller what to do. Right, so let's actually see the thermostat in practice. This is actually plugged into my diesel heater, which is down here. So you can currently see that it's 18.3 degrees in the van and the hot water is 30 degrees. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into settings on the unit and make sure my target temperature is set. So at the minute, the air temperature target, is, I want to get the van 21 degrees inside. It's currently 18.4, so that's fine. So at the minute, when I turn this to on, this should turn on the heater. turning on the heater. It's currently dialing up from the low mode to a high mode and let's see it heat the van. The glow plug's ignited. Now you've got a little symbol saying that the hot, hot air is on because the hot water is not on, the diverter is in the position to allow air to heat the van, not to heat the water. If I turn that on, it will then go the other way around. If I put it onto air and water, 
it would balance, it would prioritize getting the van hot first and then switch over to hot water afterwards. Heater is starting to pick up. Okay, as you can see now, because the temperature is already getting close, it's starting to dial down the heat output, but not to the very bottom, just slightly. So when we see that temperature rise a little bit more, we'll probably see the heat output drop a bit more. Temperature rose, dropping the heat output a little bit. So we saw it rise a little bit, it's getting towards the 21 degrees mark it is, but I'm gonna go open the side door of the van, let some cold air in and we'll watch it crank up a little bit more. The side door is open. Temperature's starting to drop now with the door open. Starts to bring the heat up again. But only slightly brought up the heat, not all the way up to full. Close my door and let's get it hotter. Heat's starting to come up, we're starting to slow the heater slightly. So 21 degrees is what it was aiming for, so it's dialing it down now. Overshot it a little bit. Now this is where it's useful for quite a few people. Lots of people know if your van is, if your heat is quite large and your van's insulated, even a diesel heater running on minimum might overheat your van and it gets too hot inside. If the temperature keeps, keeps climbing, the heater will eventually switch off. Although I purposely made it overheat because I've just turned all the ventilation off to trap the hot air in. One degree above its target temperature, so it's dialed it down a bit more. And if this gets two degrees above its set point, which in this case is 21 degrees, so if it hits 23 degrees, it's gonna turn the heater off. I don't know why the screen's not come back on, but it's overheated slightly and it's dropped down. And, oh, there we go. So overheated, 23.1. This will then turn back on again if the temperature inside the van drops three degrees below the set point. So in this case, that would be 18 degrees. Temperatures drop below that three degrees. So it's turned the heater back on and start increasing the temperature again. That is a genius way of making a dumb Chinese heater smart, having a working thermostat, the ability to turn it on and off if it gets too hot. A feature which most people complain about with Chinese heaters is that the thermostats are crap and they don't turn off if it gets too hot. Okay, some of the newer models might do the turning off, but not many. That can make your old one smart. That's brilliant. And then on top of that, you can also control your hot water as well. So whilst I'm not gonna use a smart controller, I'm gonna use the afterburner. For 99% of people, that is gonna be exactly what they want. Yes, I like the afterburner because I can use MQTT. I can look at the detailed statistics of runtime and temperature controls and fan speed and pump speed and all the extra technological nerd stuff that I enjoy. But for people who just want a diesel heater, a Chinese diesel heater to have a thermostat and turn off if it gets too hot, that is a brilliant way of doing it. Do I say game changer? I hate that phrase. So overall, what do I think? Well, this video has been sort of two parts. It's been looking at the water heater, which you can do standalone, and the water heater plus the smart controller. One, I think the smart controller absolutely changes the functionality of your Chinese diesel heater if it has a bit of a useless controller, makes it extremely effective at controlling temperature in your van, and all those extra options of now being able to heat water quickly. I think for the price point, it is, compared to other things on the market, one of the cheaper models, but also one of the most powerful as in the terms of heating water quickly. So I think it's great value for money. Speaking of money, I do have a discount code for bubble vans. Look in the description below and you can find the channel's discount codes and links. I like the unit. I've used the first generation one for the last two and a half plus years now. And the main difference between that one is my generation one has an unpressurized tank, which means I need a second pump and more pipe work. This one being a pressurized makes the system a bit more simple to integrate into your vehicle. So overall, just like the original, I'm pretty impressed with the performance of the new one. And very impressed with the new smart controller. That is a really smart way to make Chinese heaters a lot more effective. If you like this sort of stuff, I've done plenty of other reviews looking at diesel heaters and other products around, or marks on the adventure side where I actually use it when I explore the Arctic. Please do consider looking at the channel, giving it a subscription, and leaving a like and a comment. But thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.